Hi, my name is James Kumar. I'm from DDN. DDN is a company that's been around for over 20 years, 100% focused on solving the toughest data management and storage challenges out there in the industry. Today, I want to talk about DDN solutions for AI, our partnership and collaboration with NVIDIA, and our extreme scale deployments, really across all the scales, from small pods to large super pods to hyperscale, uh, along with NVIDIA and NVIDIA DGX systems. So first of all, what about DDN and which markets do we focus on? Really the whole breadth of markets and customers who have large data challenges. We're different from most companies that deliver storage because we have, well, A, 100% focus on storage and data management. We don't have big arms performing uh, compute systems or networking, et cetera. We really focus on storage. And also we've been focusing for a very, very long time at you know, solving those challenges that happen at scale. I mean, today at scale doesn't really mean um, the enormous scales it used to because it's much more pervasive now. And the advent of AI and deep learning means that you know, many, many organizations today, whether they're in research or in industry, or in the commercial world, finance, life sciences, they really all have these huge data challenges today that DDN have been solving for many years. So our customers are very prestigious and they are they vary from the medium size to the very large. You'll see many logos down here of large national labs, uh, life sciences institutes, um, extreme scale AI, whether that be natural language processing, autonomous driving, or working in clinical research or in finance. And you'll also see companies in traditional enterprise and in government and academia. What do our customers say about us? Um, happily, this report from Intersect 360 that came out last year, uh, late last year, um, did a poll around customers who had at scale storage systems. So storage systems that are designed for performance and scale. And Intersect 360 asked those organizations um, of the vendors, of the 10 top vendors of here, we're showing five, um, who is the best technically, who is the best operationally, um, who would you most likely be likely to procure from next. Um, and DDN came out number one in all of those metrics, the highest for their technical competence, operational excellence. And DDN was also the company whose storage these organizations were most likely to purchase in the next purchasing round. We're leading AI. Uh, we have pod and super pod reference architectures. We're currently the only super pod reference architecture out there. And I've got lots of very nice data to show you to explain why that is in this presentation. And we're the leader generally in at scale storage and data management. We do support the most powerful supercomputer in the world, um, but beyond that, we serve extreme scale systems in energy and life sciences and government, academia, national labs, et cetera. So what about AI? Uh, why is this so important? And why have DDN been focusing on it um, and partnering very closely with NVIDIA over the past three years? Um, well, firstly, is that data is everywhere and keeps on growing. DDN has actually been focused on particularly that area for 20 years. Um, data volumes and the rate of growth of those volumes is always unprecedented. Um, and, you know, each year it seems to surprise us. Um, and this year has been a particularly strong year for data growth because of COVID and the fact that people are working from home and generating more data across the Internet. Accessing and processing that data in the era of AI is much more important than it used to be. Um, it used to be okay in the world of NAS databases to have some silos across an organization. Now the challenge is, you know, almost we don't know which data is going to become valuable in the coming years as new techniques, um, novel ways of extracting value from data come about. We don't really know which piece of data are genuinely going to add competitive differentiation to our organizations. So having open access, but secure open access to our data scientists of the whole span of data is increasingly important. In fact, one of the biggest barriers that uh, companies have in executing on a successful AI strategy is actually getting access to the data because of siloization. The next challenge is that current 
storage systems and infrastructure in general wasn't designed for AI. So whether that's on the compute side or whether it's on the storage side or even the network side, the standard traditional enterprise approach does not work. It does not work at these scales. It does not work to satisfy the performance needs of AI and deep learning. And we need to accelerate the AI process and scale to very large volumes without breaking the bank. And our DDN's AI intelligent infrastructure really addresses these challenges. And the next slides is essentially going to tell you, you know, some examples of where we've done this and kind of what's the secret source inside DDN, inside our people, inside a technology that helps us address all these major challenges. Now, just to push home the point, um, obviously for our customers, then AI is seen as a potentially huge differentiator. For some of those customers, it is already a massive differentiator. And for many customers, it will be. But nine out of 10 of AI projects fail, and for many, many reasons. But the needle of that, that reasoning is really pointing more towards infrastructure today than it ever has been. If you asked two or three years ago, there'd be a big challenge around training data scientists, around finding the data. Um, those haven't all been resolved, but certainly the focus now is, you know, the AI models are simplified quite a lot. The implementation of AI frameworks is also simplified. Now the challenge is, how do I get my infrastructure to correctly and efficiently serve the strategy that I'm aiming for? And the risks around that are very great. The risks happen in the, you know, moving into production, trying to get uh, systems online at this kind of scale and cope with the data volumes. Integrating the AI software and ancillary software systems into that new infrastructure. Scaling them from prototype to production, or even from production to next generation production, that scaling problem is a recurring challenge. And finding a technology to partner with to help succeed in that AI strategy is another great challenge our customers face. So here's a, a kind of mock-up of many of the challenges we've seen talking to our customers and organizations out there who've attempted and some have been successful, some have, been, have had some failures. And we've really put in one slide the issues that we've seen customers face. Now, often people are starting from a POC, they're starting small, some kind of shadow AI project maybe, or maybe it's driven by corporate IT. And the path to AI failure is a long one and can have many, many hurdles. First one often is, and we've seen this a lot, is that customers, organizations will, you know, start with the storage they know. Start, and that typically means a traditional enterprise storage vendor. Enterprise storage is great for databases, great for your NAS and home and serving uh, Windows document environments, et cetera. But it's really not well tested at the sort of scales that we see here. And we'll see that problem come back in this pathway here. And then typically, once they move into production, especially when they're successful or seeing the first glimmerings of success, the data volumes can grow very, very fast. Um, often in AI, successful AI project brings in more data by its very virtue of its presence. And that means you need more capacity. As you expand the systems and you expand the AI compute, then users often complain that their workloads are slow, um, whether it's due to network or whether it's due to protocols, whether it's due to compute systems or even storage, um, some, something is slow. And that can be a challenge when uh, your partner organization isn't really focused on getting performance out. Then as system scale, then there's all kinds of corner cases that happen very regularly at these large scales, which really don't happen at all at those smaller scales. So in particular, uh, we can see interactions between compute and network. Uh, we can see interactions between network and storage and all those three together. And it requires expertise and specialisms um, to crack those tough challenges that appear. The next one, the ingest pipes are marked down here because often our customers really overlook the right aspects of storage, the right performance. AI is generally very well known as being read intensive, and that's true. But there's inevitable parts of that process which are critically write intensive. And the first one is the most important one, ingesting of the data itself in the first place. And sometimes that's extremely intensive. Uh, we have customers in autonomous driving who are pulling in over 100 terabytes per vehicle per day. 
And that means you easily get to many, many hundreds of petabytes. And these are the kind of scales where the right performance, the ingest rate is very, very critical. And then longer term or midterm applications will evolve. And if you remember, if you look back in your minds to the Hadoop world we've really come out of now, the big data world, uh, we've, we had a, a very particular batch oriented storage environment with a particular set of applications and frameworks that plugged into that very tightly. And now it's very different. We have um, users using uh, various sorts of desktops. We have Spark applications, we have AI frameworks. We have a much wider mix of applications who can potentially apply useful compute into our data. And they're using the fastest way possible, which is actually POSIX. Now, POSIX is the same method you're using on your laptop or your computer to mount and see your storage. It's the normal way, if you like, but it's also the fastest way. Um, lots of very, very strong optimizations in POSIX allow data to be read very fast if you're using the right protocols to do that. We'll come back to that later on. But the point is we need a system to be flexible to serve an evolving ecosystem of applications that want to plug in and access that data and add value to that data. And if you start with something that's rather particular and constricted, you can inhibit your ability to evolve to the next generation. Siloization uh, and performance are the really two biggest areas of complaint we see from uh, new customers of ours who are moving off previous storage. Uh, they find siloization inevitably really inhibits their data scientists from being successful because they can't access the data easily. You've got to go backwards and forwards between administration, administrators to get secure access to that data. You've got to manage VPNs, move through networks, mount storage systems and other storage systems, a very complex set of processes. And once they do get access to that data, then the apps can still be slow, even if the storage is fast. So how does that work? The storage says it's fast, um, but the applications are still running slow. Well, the problem there is one of protocols. Um, we can have the fastest storage in the universe, but the pipe, the software pipe, the protocol pipe that's moving that data into the compute is the critical link for application performance. And we'll come back to this, but DDN pays particular attention to bringing intelligence not only into the storage, but into the network and into the compute. So we deliver that data from storage into applications much, much more efficiently than with traditional NFS protocols. Then manageability becomes a problem as customers move into hundreds of terabytes, petabytes, then they can find just managing drives, managing networks, uh, managing compute. This all becomes rather unmanageable if you don't start off with an architecture designed for scale. And once all these issues have happened, then essentially you're on a trail to a failed, failed AI project. Um, the inference workloads, which are particularly IO intensive, can start going way too slow for the production demand. The data can't all be addressed in time. And then ultimately data scientists will not be able to be innovative. They'll not be able to go out and go beyond standard production requirements and find that golden nugget in your data. And the results won't be achieved. So this path we've seen many times over in various forms and various customers. And really, it starts with that first premise, an architecture that is designed for AI. DDN's A3i is really being built over 20 years, but particularly focused and enhanced on AI in partnership with NVIDIA for over three years now. And we'll give you some great examples of that in the next few slides. It's a single scalable software and potentially hardware platform. Um, which serves the entire end-to-end -end life cycle of AI data. So that includes that ingest problem. That includes the data labeling, the tough munging of data that happens as data is brought in. And then of course, we've optimized and tested at very, very large scales for deep learning and inference. So for the model creation um, and the model recomputation and the model deployments. And then the data can move into another phase. Often it stays archived, it stays active actually, um, but sometimes it might be at least part, partially archived. And this same framework that DDN have, DDN A3AI, allows you to bring that data in, bring your models to production and store your data long-term cost-effectively at scale all in one non-siloed area. Every stage is optimized. 
and we really have the most complete integrations to GPU environments out there on the planet. And I'll go into a bit more detail in the next few slides. But first, DDN isn't only about A3i. So A3i is really the core technology we're talking about here, the parallel scalable file system. But it's surrounded by a set, a real a large portfolio of storage solutions, data management solutions, and services. To give you a little example, we run our file system technologies in all public clouds. We have other storage and file system technologies to serve different problems. So those enterprise problems, virtualized environments, databases, NAS, we have different storage products which are optimized to deliver those very efficiently. And we have an overarching monitoring and management environment that applies intelligence to this storage infrastructure, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. Then underlying that, you know, we have a total of a thousand staff DDN, half over half of whom are technical, and they are focused on storage and data management. So when you have a challenge, when you have a problem, we have very experienced people, experienced in working in the challenges of scale to help you through any problems you might encounter when deploying AI infrastructure. Now, that's not just our expertise and our past experience. It also comes from rigorous benchmarking and qualification on our own, in our own benchmark labs, and also in close collaboration with NVIDIA, and particularly with NVIDIA DGX systems. We're the only reference architecture today for SuperPod and for Pod. So we scale from single systems up to tested 128 systems, and actually in deployment, many more than that. But we have papers with benchmarks showing our performance for inference workloads um, and different other AI workloads for very, very large scale, proven. Go to nvidia.com or go to ddn.com and you can find our DDN A3i SuperPod reference architectures. And really, you won't find any other vendor today that can perform at these scales and give you the evidence that these benchmarks have been actually run at these very, very large scales over these very, very large systems. And one of the systems we used to run these benchmarks and test these uh, novel approaches that we have implemented is NVIDIA Selene. This is number five in the top supercomputer list. So it's a very, very large system. It's using NVIDIA's DGX systems. It is a super pod and that runs DDN's A3i systems you see there right at the center of this architecture. It's an all NVMe storage system. It runs our A3i parallel file system. And as I said, it's got a lot of integrations, which I'll just give you a few pointers to in the next few slides. So where else have we deployed um, these pod and super pod solutions? Well, we are deployed in the world's largest natural language processing uh, system. So extremely large uh, NLP. That means, you know, for example, you might be talking into a device and the device goes off to some AI supercomputer and works out what you're saying and performs some action. DDN designed and delivered an AI data flat platform in under 30 days, which enables full GPU saturation for over 150 uh, GPU-based nodes. Secondly, many of our customers are in autonomous driving. Uh, making safe, intelligent mobility a reality is a tough challenge and does require huge amounts of data. This is where DDN's hybrid solutions often come to the fore. The costs of placing hundreds of petabytes of data on all flash is still prohibitive, and DDN intelligently combine layers of flash to provide performance and large volumes of HDDs, hard drives, to bring cost-effective capacity. And we have many examples in the US and Europe and in the, in the Far East, which are implementing extremely large scale autonomous driving systems. Not only in the UK, also in the US, but in, and in Sweden and other European countries and elsewhere, as we'll see in the next couple of slides, uh, DDN have delivered our A3i storage to support NVIDIA superpods to become various countries' largest AI supercomputers. Typically, these are solving critical healthcare challenges, but also a wider variety of data science problems. The final example on this slide is actually St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Uh, accelerating clinical and research genomics with GPUs is uh, a technique that's being taken advantage very widely in medicine. Um, by using DDN's architecture, using fast networks and extremely scalable storage, we can 
improve the application runtime by over 20x and eliminate that um, waste of GPU cycles. So all the investment you put into not only the GPUs, the computer, the network, but also into the data scientists and the data itself um, shouldn't be bottlenecked by storage. And by using A3i, we really get rid of that bottleneck. Recursions is a particular customer I wanted to talk about. Recursion Pharmaceuticals are a really novel company who are deploying, uh, have deployed a very large superpod with, with NVIDIA and with DDN um, to help rapidly identify new drugs. So what they started doing uh, several years ago now is leverage this new world of AI to try and improve that drug discovery process. So DDN and NVIDIA teamed up to deploy into recursion, a very large scale system. Again, 20X cost savings and much, much faster pipeline acceleration with this on-prem system, uh, very fast networks and A3I storage, and to provide a platform for the end-to-end -end workflow from data capture, data management, preparation, and then all the um, deep learning and inference as well. Sweden's uh, Wallenberg Artificial Intelligence and Autonomous Systems and Software Program is designed to bring uh, intelligence and autonomous systems into the Swedish infrastructure, um, so allow um, collaborations between various partners, uh, allowing those uh, organizations to uh, learn how to implement AI um, and manipulate data coming in from sensors and forming intelligent systems of systems using this extremely large uh, system in Sweden. DDN's A3i or Flash solutions uh, now support this superpod, uh, which will deliver a processing speed of uh, over 300 petaflops um, for AI. One more example, there are many more actually, uh, we can't go through them all. Um, in Japan, ABCI, a very prestigious system for bridging the academic and research and industrial use of AI um, to help um, speed up Japan's uh, excellence in using AI for healthcare, research, and other, other areas. So it's a dedicated and open computing infrastructure for developing algorithms and software for AI and big data applications. Um, and DDN systems are, again, of course, used in, in this system to provide high performance storage. University of Florida um, last year it was developed as the largest, the fastest AI supercomputer um, at the University of Florida um, in the US. Uh, over 700 petaflops. Um, it's tightly integrated and tested with A3i. It is an NVIDIA superpod again. Um, it's designed for a very wide range of um, uh, research areas. So not the traditional ones uniquely, but also religion, agriculture, liberal arts and engineering. Uh, the students working on the system will have the opportunity to use their AI curriculum, the University of Florida and apply that knowledge uh, to really develop um, much stronger the, the application of AI to a broad set of research areas. So all of these implementations and many more um, have been implemented with DDN and NVIDIA in close partnership. Um, we worked with NVIDIA and as you saw with that Celine system, it's been going for a long time. The integrations we've had have been really at all levels. So into the network, um, into the DGX environment itself. It's a multi-networked environment. We've got intelligence that uh, manages that. The GPU, again, we have a bit more intelligence, which allows us to be optimized for the NVIDIA GPUs. And of course, the AI frameworks, which are running on top of those GPUs. Again, we've performed uh, various works in engineering to make sure that we are optimal for the huge range of AI frameworks, which are out there. So let's talk a bit more about our solution in DDN A3i and really what's the secret source in there that, that makes it um, a very efficient and optimal file system for supporting these tough AI challenges. So the first thing is parallelism. And if you know anything about GPUs, then what they're really using is the ultimate in parallelism when it's applied to compute. So many, many, many cores running in tandem to accelerate this compute challenge that is AI. Now DDN does the same thing, but from the storage perspective, we have this software parallel file system that really is parallel. And what that means is that each application 
is writing and reading in parallel to the whole infrastructure across all the networks. Um, our intelligence spans not only the storage, but the network and the compute. And having that intelligence in software running across the whole system really means we can engage that parallelism to benefit of application performance and simplicity at scale. We've been, we were the first to deploy NVIDIA's GPU direct storage. That's a technology that allows us within this intelligent infrastructure to move data from our storage directly into GPU memory, bypassing many of the potential bottlenecks that can happen en route. Our file system eliminates backend congestion. Now, that seems a, maybe a, a, a kind of complicated thing to say, but many of the so-called parallel file systems out there really implement all that parallelism at the back end. So as opposed to DDN, which we bring intelligence into the infrastructure, many systems really pile that into the back end. And what happens there is the more and more you scale, the more and more congestion you get at this back end. And effectively that takes away performance from the applications and ultimately it stops the system, systems from reaching the kind of scales that DDN does. So getting rid of that back end congestion by having intelligence across the network and in the compute is really our secret source. And in terms of efficiency, what does that bring us? Again, that intelligence in the compute, our own software here, our own software running across the network and our own software, of course, in the storage means that we benefit not just storage performance, but we get the most out of that network and we get the most out of that compute. One example just here, and this isn't even at large scale, this is a pod scale, even a single DGX system, we can see compared with NFS, compared with traditional enterprise protocols such as NFS, we can get three times the performance with a real world PyTorch deep learning challenge, um, even at small scale. So whilst we are fully tested at super pod scale, we're also fully tested at pod scale and the benefits that we bring to the scalable systems do bring benefits, very strong benefits in small scale in terms of applications running faster in terms of efficiencies in that system. So what's happened in the past year? Where's our focus been and where's it going to be? Well, pretty much all of this is around the challenges we see in AI and deep learning. At the start of last year, we implemented GPU direct to storage. I mentioned that before. Uh, we also implemented some comprehensive AI data acceleration inside our systems, essentially optimizations and efficiencies for the AI frameworks inside our platforms. We implemented, because many customers really want this option to run in public cloud, we've implemented our file system also in AWS, in Google's GCP, and in Microsoft's Azure. So all those public clouds are using DDN's file systems. And all the benefits I've talked about really apply there. So this parallelism, this intelligence that goes across the network, allows you to get better efficiencies out of these public cloud resources and scale better. We've also introduced a whole different product line called IntelliFlash, and that really works very, very well and brings in a whole bunch of new enterprise features, dedupe compression, snapshots, cloning, all that um, goodness that enterprises are used to, but we do it from a company and within an ecosystem that really will allow you to scale ultimately. Now, what's happening this year? Well, we've been working on this for quite a long time, and what you're gonna see this year is Firstly, optimized Kubernetes integrations. So supporting those Kubernetes environments, microservices environments very, very strongly. That's really happened already. That's been released. Uh, coming up is a new release of our Insight monitoring system. We put in some, um, uh, my colleague, William Bowden will talk about this. We put in some smarts that allow us to see the AI workloads as they're running. So imagine a real production system, small scale or medium scale, large scale. From the storage system, we can see the activity of the application, the activity of that framework, the files it's creating, the data it's moving, um, and we can present that back to our users. So it's not about storage monitoring and storage analysis. It's about workload monitoring and workload analysis, something we do kind of uniquely in this industry. And then watch this space a little bit uh, for Q3 and Q4. We'll be talking about that a little bit during this um, during GTC, but also later on in the year about more optimizations we've got up our sleeves in conjunction with NVIDIA to further accelerate data. So why should you come to DDN? Um, firstly, increased efficiency, the sort of efficiency that spans network and compute as well as storage. 
accelerating those applications, both at modest scale, at pod scale, but also, of course, at super pod, pod scale, bringing costs down as you scale. And inevitably, on day one, you may not know where you're going to end up in one, two, three, four years time. So having options to cost effectively move performance, to move capacity, or both is really what you need. And DDN is unique in having that very, very um, multidimensional approach to scale that brings you both the performance you need and the cost-effective scaling you need. First of all, and the most important thing about this presentation is proven. Um, through our partnership with NVIDIA, through our deployments at huge scales, in many, many, uh, in all the continents, in fact, the largest scale systems in every one of those continent, continents across all industries, DDN has the strongest proven track record of deploying in these tough, complex AI environments. And the last thing is really being easy at scale is not just about infrastructure. It's not just about reducing complexity um, using our parallel technology. It's also about services and people. And what DDN is about and why we've been very successful over the past 20 years in working on storage and data at scale is the fact that when customers inevitably do have challenges, we have the people and the know-how to get over those. And we go beyond the storage. We really work with compute. We work with network. And we help optimize and debug and overcome really tough challenges across our infrastructure. So if you are on this AI journey and you want to de-risk it, and maximize your chance of AI success whilst accelerating applications and whilst reducing the cost of your potential future scaling, then please come and talk to us at DDN. You can listen to our other, other uh, presentations at GTC. You can mail me, jkuma, C-O-O-M-E-R, at ddn.com. And of course, please come to ddn.com where you'll see a link to our microsite for AI. Thank you very much. I've been James Kuma. I hope to speak to you soon.